Since its announcement, it seems to me that one of the operative questions when it comes to Assassin's Creed Valhalla is whether or not it can deliver on one of its key premises. That is, that it's an RPG. Now say what you will about Ubisoft deciding that Assassin's Creed is going to follow in the footsteps of the likes of The Witcher 3 and other large-scale RPGs instead of following the classic formula that so many of us fell in love with. We are all very well aware that these games that are releasing nowadays are not the same Assassin's Creed titles as we had before. We can mourn that, complain about it, talk about that in a separate video, but today I wanted to test whether or not Assassin's Creed Valhalla is actually an RPG. It's a term that's thrown around so loosely nowadays that everything from Assassin's Creed to Final Fantasy to even the latest LEGO games are being advertised as RPGs in one way or another. For the sake of this video, my definition is pretty straightforward. I want to make sure that you can roll play in the game, hence the term RPG role-playing game. To me, this means that you have to have consequences to your actions. There have to be choices that can be made that have an impact on the story and or the world around you. Another level of complexity within an RPG would be something such as an action RPG, where you are perhaps not making choices that affect the story, but you're creating a character built specifically around your playstyle, therefore role-playing as a character that plays in a certain way. That to me is also a very valid definition of role-playing game. It's an action Action RPG as opposed to a narrative one. The operative question is whether or not Assassin's Creed Valhalla can cater to any playstyle or to any desire that the player may have within the story, allowing you to make choices and mistakes and let those play out. But just before we get into it, I want to stress that I am going to be going through multiple story segments of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And so if you're opposed to spoilers of any way, shape, or form, you probably should click away, play the game, and then come back to this, at which point you'll probably have your own opinion. But the point is, there's no way to discuss branching options and choices within a game's story without talking about the game's story. So naturally, we're gonna be getting into spoiler territory pretty quickly. And of course, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video, it really does help. Also follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, everything will be linked in the description box below. So, does Assassin's Creed Valhalla have what it takes to keep pace with the juggernauts of the role-playing games industry? The second that Ubisoft sent me a review code for the game, I started playing through it, trying to keep an eye out for any branching narrative choices that might arise. For the sake of this video, and for the sake of brevity, I'm going to be using two basic examples. One is a dynamic encounter you can find throughout the game world. It's one that I've talked about before during my other video where I talked about the preview event that I went to. The other example is actually in the main story, roughly six to eight hours into the main story. To begin, within most narrative RPGs, there are dynamic encounters that you can find throughout the world. These usually don't have a huge impact on the game world around you, but they offer the player an interesting opportunity to engage with the world on a deeper level than you might have initially thought possible. In this particular instance, I was riding through the world on my horse as I crested over a hill, at which point I saw a little girl standing underneath a tree. All of the leaves had fallen from the tree except for one, and I noticed that she kept yelling at the leaf to stay on the tree. A little weird. Naturally, I hopped off my horse, even though I didn't have to. I could have kept going and exploring the world. I didn't need to stop, but the game gave me the option, so I stopped and started talking to this little girl. Turns out her father left. He went to gather supplies, run errands, whatever it may have been, it's not particularly important, but he said that he would be back before the last leaf fell from that tree. The problem, of course, being that there is only one leaf left on the tree, and it's been quite a while. Weeks at this point. The little girl is obviously in denial about her father. Likely something happened to him, he's out in the world, he was either killed or he simply ran off. The game at this point gives the player the option to either comfort her, to tell her that she should perhaps start looking into other options and opportunities for housing, or to break the news to her that her father is likely dead. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm trying to push an RPG to its limits, I usually try to play a terrible person because most often the game is least prepared to handle those types of choices. So naturally, I decided to break the news to her that her father was likely dead, never coming home, and that she should move on. I told her this and she naturally responded as though I was the Antichrist coming down to take vengeance on humanity. I stood my ground, but she remained resolute. She demanded that I leave, and that this leaf would remain on the tree and her father would be home any minute or any hour now. 
Now already this is a pretty interesting encounter. It's out in the world, you didn't have to stop to engage with this little girl, you could have kept writing. It was optional, but it's this type of thing that makes the world feel a bit more alive than it would otherwise. Furthermore, the game also gave you the opportunity to talk to her in a different way. You could comfort her, you could give her encouragement, or you could do what I did and break the cold harsh reality to her. I mean, either way. This is an individual that left his daughter alone as he traveled away for at least weeks on end and has failed to return. Whether he's alive or dead, this probably isn't a man that should be in charge of a little girl out in a very dangerous area of the world. So in a tough love sort of way, in my mind, breaking the news to her that her father likely is dead or gone seemed as though it was probably what's best for the little girl. But I think the most interesting option that the game presents to you is one that I wouldn't have initially thought possible. You see, the leaf is just sitting on the tree. It's not doing anything. And you can shoot it down. So after the little girl told me to go screw myself, I took out my bow and arrow and... Bloop. And yeah, I mean, she basically thinks that you're Satan incarnate for doing this, and perhaps she's right to think that. It's a pretty cruel thing to do. But just in this small dynamic encounter that you don't even have to stop and engage with, there are branching options that have an impact on this little girl's state of mind, how she lives, and how her future will play out. Now, I'm not done with my run of the game, so I'm not certain whether or not you're able to ever find her father, or if he returns to her, or if you ever find out what happened to him. It's possible, but I'm not sure at this point. I don't know, if you find out when you play the game, make sure to leave it in the comments section. I'm sure we'd all love to know. The point is, this is a really interesting encounter, and it's one I want to give Ubisoft credit for because it was really engaging and very memorable. So this one, as far as I'm concerned, meets the requirement of an RPG. But what about the main story? Are there examples in the main story of branching choices, dialogue options, and impact on the world based on your decisions? Well, let's look at one particular option that comes about, again, roughly eight or so hours into the main story. At this stage of the story, Ivor is going from kingdom to kingdom, helping out the rulers of that particular area or the insurgents trying to take over power of that area by doing basic missions, assassinations, and things like that. In this particular instance, there's a lady that you're helping and she has three close associates. However, she knows that one of them is a traitor, has been leaking information to the enemy, and even helped their assassination target escape using knowledge of an underground tunnel system that only these three and the lady that you're helping knew of. So she tasks you with figuring out who is the traitor. You can go talk to them, you can talk to other people within the village and within the group, and try to decipher whether or not one person is the traitor or not. So fundamentally, this comes down to choosing between one of three individuals and based on your choice one of these people will die and the other two will live as you continue out the rest of this particular quest so I decided to test all three of these individuals you do have to pick one you can't say I don't know we can't choose yet you have to pick at least one of them to die so I went through both Berna Leaf and also Galen to make sure that I had all of my bases covered. And I tested how the rest of this quest line played out based on who you chose. Real quick, this is your last warning for spoilers because after this I'm going to tell you who the actual traitor was and what happens if you choose right and or wrong. Okay, the traitor is Galen. However, he wasn't my first choice. Basically, he's having delusions of grandeur. He's having all of these visions, and it basically seems as though he's drugged out of his mind, and he's trying to serve these individuals in his visions above and beyond those around him. And that's what's causing him to betray even his most trusted confidants and those around him. However, in order to pick up on this, at least as far as I'm concerned, to a reasonable degree of certainty, you have to talk to at least three separate people and listen very closely to how he describes what's going on and then compare that to how other people describe his current state of mind. It's doable, but you really have to pay attention. This is not in any way, shape, or form an easy decision to make. Ubisoft has made it very difficult to determine who is the actual traitor because each of these inner circle individuals have reasons that they might betray the person that you're helping. Now my first choice was to kill Berna. She rubbed me the wrong way, seemed a little strange, so I thought that she was the traitor. So, naturally, 
she was executed, and we went about the rest of our quest line as though nothing bad had happened. You go out, you assassinate another target, you do a quick little raid, but when you return to your base of operations, you find everybody dead. Galen's gone and murdered everybody, because again, he's having these delusions of grandeur, he thinks that he's in service to some greater power that doesn't exist, blah blah blah. This triggers a bunch of enemies to jump out of the woodwork to fight, and it also triggers a mini boss fight with Galen, which is a nice way to cap all of this quest line. However, once you defeat him, there's no big reward. There's no character that joins your boat crew. There's nothing really that happens. It's a really solemn occasion. Furthermore, Ivor knows that she screwed up. And there's dialogue options here that basically describe how Ivor feels really guilty that she had somebody innocent killed and that the guilty party then murdered a bunch of other innocent individuals because of her mistake. But let's rewind to what would have happened if we had chosen Galen. I mean, this happens whether we choose Leaf or Berna. So what happens if we choose the correct guilty party? Well, if you choose Galen, then he's executed. That's that. You go about the quest line, you assassinate the target, do a quick little raid, and when you return to your base of operations, everything is fine. You actually get rewarded a really nice piece of gear. And then one of the other characters, in this case, Berna, decides that she's going to join your crew on your boat. It's actually like a really cool ending. Everything works out perfectly. And the person you were helping pledges her fealty to you in the upcoming raids of the larger villages and towns because she's so pleased with how you helped her and the great job that you did, especially in helping weed out the traitor. It's a choice that actually has significant and meaningful impact on the world around you. I love this. Now, realistically, does it matter that Berna joins your crew? No, not really in the grand scheme of things. She pops up in a couple later cutscenes in the background, but for the most part, she isn't an integral character in the rest of the story. So it doesn't matter that much. Same as though if you had chosen to kill Berna and allowed Galen to kill everybody else, it wouldn't have actually mattered that much because most of these characters go their separate ways anyway, and you won't see them much if at all. However, the fact that there is a branching narrative and there are choices that you can make that do have an impact on the rest of the story, I think deserves some credit. Now, I have not finished my testing, so I'm not sure how many different endings there are or how many different end states there are within the game world. Usually with a game like this, I would expect at least a few that alter based on who you chose to help and keep alive throughout the main story, just like with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but time will tell. The point is, it seems as though Assassin's Creed Valhalla actually does have a lot of narrative RPG elements. And furthermore, in terms of action RPG elements, there's a lot of different weapons and styles of gameplay built into the skill tree. You can choose to play a classic assassin going through stealthily killing people very quietly, hiding bodies in bales of hay or you can go in axes blazing chopping people up with some crazy grotesque finisher moves now does this mean that the game is perfect no i actually have some major issues with assassin's creed valhalla that i'm going to be making videos on in the coming days and weeks again make sure to subscribe for those i think it's important that you know about all of these issues before you go out and buy it not to be a debbie downer but there are large chunks of this game that made me very disappointed and it's just just too bad. But again, subscribe so you see those. The point is, when it comes to role-playing elements, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has a lot more than I think most people were expecting. However, we're definitely going to need more time to continue testing and pushing this game to its limits to see just how robust these choices are and can be. But that's all for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all more than you could possibly know. Again, please like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. You guys are amazing. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.